What's up everybody? So in this question, this question is actually fairly unique. We haven't done too many questions like this. We have to basically take this graph and represent it algebraically as a piecewise function. So how are we going to do that? So notice how we're working with three legs here. We got this, this, and then this. So let's start off with working with this leg here. Notice how this leg it's defined for x values that are less than negative 2, right? All of these x and y values here, this scale is going up by 1s. So this point here is negative 2 and positive 1. And then this point here, which is the vertex, notice how this is a parabola. That's another thing to notice. And the vertex of this parabola is going to be at negative 3 and positive 2. Okay, so let's start off working with this function. Let's find an algebraic expression. So this is going to be for when x is less than negative 2. The reason why it's less than negative 2 is because there's a hole there. If this was a solid dot, then it'd be x is less than or equal to negative 2. And this is a parabola with a vertex at negative 3 and 2. So what we can do, we know the... general format of a parabola is this. Well, we can plug in this negative 3 and 2, right? So we would have y equals a bracket x plus 3. The h value is negative 3. x minus negative 3 would turn into plus 3. This would be squared. And then the plus k would be this plus 2. So we represented this vertex here. And now what we can do is we can use this point negative 2 and 1, plug it in for the x and the y values and solve for a. So the y value would be 1, a value stays, we're solving for that, negative 2 plus 3 squared plus 2, so y equals a, negative 2 plus 3 is 1, 1 squared is just 1, plus 2, bring that over, so 1 minus 2 is negative 1, 1 times a is just 1a, so that means a is negative 1. So the equation of this parabola here is y equals negative bracket x plus 3 squared plus 2, right? So we first took the vertex of the parabola, plugged it in, and then we solve for that a value by taking any point on the function, plugging it in for x and y, and solving for a. The easier point, I think, in my opinion, was to use where this function stops at, which was at negative 2 and 1. Plugged in negative 2 and 1, solve for the a value. So we know that this parabola here is defined by this function, and that happens when x is less than negative 2. So we have one leg done with. Okay, what about the next leg, this one? Well, let's figure out what the ranges of the x's are that we're working with in this leg. Notice how it's happening between an x value of negative 1 and positive 1. But the x value of negative 1 is defined because it's a solid dot, but the x value of 1 is not defined because it's a hole there. So this leg is happening on this range, where x is greater than or equal to negative 1, solid dot, but less than positive 1. And it's not less than or equal to positive 1, it's just less than 1 because of this hole here. And notice how this is just a horizontal line. And we know a horizontal line takes the format what? y is equal to just a number. Well, what's the number? The y value is negative 1. So the equation of this leg is just y is equal to negative 1. Remember, y equals a number is a horizontal line. A vertical line is x equals a number. So because it's horizontal and it's happening at a y value of negative 1, the equation of this line is y equals negative 1. And then what about this leg here? This leg, notice how it's happening, where x is greater than or equal to 1, right? Because this is happening at an x value of 1. 
So this is x is greater than or equal to 1, sorry, because this is a solid dot here. And notice how this is just a line, right? So you just have to find the equation of line, bunch of different ways you can do it. You could first find the slope with two points. Maybe you can use this point here. Um, what point is this? 1 and negative 3. And then maybe you could use this point here, which would be 4 and 0. So find the slope between those, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, then plug in one of the points to solve for the b value. That's one way to do it. <coughs> um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it right away in y equals mx plus b format. So the m is the slope. Well, notice how we're always rising by 1, running by 1. Rising by 1, running by 1. Right? Rising by 1, running by 1. So the slope is just 1 over 1, which is just 1. So we know this is going to be 1x or just x, right? Slope is 1 for this graph. And then if we continue down that pattern, the b value is going to be at negative 4, right? The b value represents the y-intercept of a line. And because this point is at 1, negative 3, if we continue that pattern, down with the slope, we would get to this point 0 and negative 4. So the b value is negative 4, and that is the equation of the line, y equals x minus 4. And that's the same equation you should get if you did it the longer way, where you took two points, find the slope between them, and then solve for the b value you would end up getting that equation y equals x minus 4. So now that we represented each of these three legs with an equation for a certain restriction on x, we can put all of this in a piecewise function. So this would be f of x equals, let's put in that piecewise function format. So let's go from left to right. Let's start with this. This is here. So the y value is going to be negative x plus 3 squared plus 2. And this happens when x is less than negative 2. What about this leg here? Well, this leg, we know the y values are equal to negative 1. So f of x is going to equal negative 1. And this is happening when x is between uh, negative 1 and positive 1 and it's inclusive of negative 1 because it was defined there. And then the last leg, this one here, it's defined by the line y equals x minus 4. So it's going to be f of x equals x minus 4. And that's happening when x is greater than or equal to positive 1. And that is the piecewise function there. Notice how I didn't, uh, one note I want to make is I didn't make these like y equals this, y equals negative 1, y equals x minus 4, because that is already represented by this f of x equals. So we're saying f of x equals this when x is less than negative 2, f of x equals negative 1 for that range of x, f of x equals x minus 4 when x is greater than or equal to. One. So you don't put f of x or y in these portions, you just put the actual equation, the right side of the equation for each of these legs here. And that is it. That's your final answer. So when you get something like this, just work with each leg separately, find its equation. Sometimes you have to do some algebra. So for example, with this parabola, we have to solve for the a value, etc., etc. For this one, we have to find the slope, the b value. So find the equation for each of these and then find the ranges or the restrictions on x for which they are happening. The restrictions go here and then the equations go here and you have your piecewise function. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.